Hello everybody! Happy Thursday! I'm Pia from Stitches and Scraps and this is Lunchtime Live episode 67. So for those of you who are new, Lunchtime Live is basically my video newsletter. So I'll be telling you everything that's going on at Stitches and Scraps um, and then we finish up with a little demo of either a knit or crochet technique. So we've been doing a sequence of um, puffy stitches. We did popcorns and then we did bobbles and then this week we're going to do puff stitches um, to kind of wrap up that sequence there. And um, But before we get to that, let me tell you everything, everything that's going on at Stitches and Scraps. As I am telling you these things, there, it, take a look at the description on the video. There is a link in that description that will take you to a blog post on Stitches and Scraps. And in that blog post, you'll see a list of everything I'm planning to talk about. All of the links are there. So if I mention a pattern or a, you know some post or tutorial or something like that, go there to find the link to it if you want. The whole list is right there. Um, so let's get into it. The new pattern for this week was Steampunk Cyanide from, uh, for the Moogly Cow. Those of you who don't know the Moogly Cow, you definitely want to get in on it next year. It's a really fun um, crochet along that Tamara Kelly from Moogly Blog does every single year. Hi Beth, good to see you. Um, so this crochet along is 12 inch blanket squares and she has 24 of them through the year with different designers for each square. And then, um, and they wrap up right usually the week of Thanksgiving. And then you have the next, you know, month or so to finish your blanket and you have a great blanket either for the winter or for gifting. Um, and some of them are really gorgeous and, and it's a great community. They all chat a lot. It's very active. It's one of my favorite cows to participate in as far as participating in outside cows um, that aren't on my site. So my square got to be the last one this year. That was very exciting. And here it is. I'm going to hold it up because it's too big to really show from the bottom. Hi, Mary. Happy Thursday. Um, so this is Steampunk Cyanide. This is my square for the Moogly Cal for this year. So lots and lots of puff stitches in here and then some post stitches and some spike stitches and some stitches I called nested V stitches. Um, so lots of techniques going on in this square. Uh, but I also have a full one hour long video tutorial that will walk you step by step through every single stitch in this square. Um, I basically just recorded myself making it and did a video tutorial as I was making it. Um, and yes, I made two. Here's one. Here's the other. This one is blocked. This one is not blocked and ends not woven in. This was my video one. Um, but yeah, so this is the square. You should also check out the Moogly Cal group because on Facebook because some of the squares people have made are just stunning. There's all different color combinations um, and people have done different things on the border when their gauge wasn't quite on the same as mine, you know. Um, so you'll see some extended borders and you'll see the square all in one color looks stunning. I love that. Um, and there's a stained glass one that's really cool too where they use black to highlight the colors and bring out the colors. Um, so definitely go check that out. That is the new pattern and tutorial that came up for this the past week. It was before Thanksgiving. Um, this week I haven't gotten anything out yet because I'm working on something really big um, and I did a video tutorial for it. I'm editing the tutorial now. I'm really hoping to get it out. Um, let me see if I can find a picture for you here. I'm going to have to show you a picture from my computer um, because it's way too big to show you. Oh, there we go. Okay, so let me show you this picture. This is a beaded wall hanging that is currently hanging over my guest bed. Um, it's 36 inches across. That dowel rod is 36 inches and that circle is 10 inches. So it's actually pretty big. Um, so I couldn't bring it down here and show you. But I am currently working on a tutorial for this. This uses, I don't know if you guys remember, months ago, 
um, before my whole world went completely insane, um, Potomac Beads had sent me a whole bunch of fun beads to play with. There were the big ones that they sent me are exclusive to them, I believe, and they're they call them cosmic crystal or crystal cosmic um, rings, and they are. They're the big beads that are on the outside edge of that um, wall hanging. They're so cool and they're so shiny, right? Even in the room when, the, when it's not lit up, they still sparkle a little bit just with whatever ambient light there is. So I loved those in there. And I used the last of the tubes of um, seed beads that they sent me. I'd use some of them for my um, ghost ornament, if you remember, the, or was it an ornament or was it just a ghost? It was just a ghost. Um, I'd made a little, knit amigurumi ghost for Halloween and I'd use some of the beads in that um, but I used all the rest of them so that it's not a fast project okay you have to tie on each bead individually and there were approximately 400 beads that I tied on individually <laughs> but it, it took me most of the day but I did finish it in one day and I did the whole video tutorial for it and I'm working on it. I'm trying to get it out to you guys this week um, as my project for this week, but it might be the weekend before I get to it. Um, the other thing that I'm working on is a new magnet for the Magnet Cal. And if you look behind me, you'll see it. I should, I should grab it and show it to you. This is a sneak peek. This comes out next week. And it is a snowman. Okay, there we go. Snowman. So that's going to come out next week. I've got to work on this pattern and get it tested as well. Karen, if you're watching, I'm sorry that I'm always late getting these to you, but I will get this out to you this weekend to get tested. And then this will come out next week. Um, so that is, and that'll be the last pattern in the Magnets Cal. So be sure to enter for that giveaway as well. Um, it's our last one and I want to say it runs through the end of December to enter the giveaway so but go check that out um, the magnets crochet along page um, and then I wanted to say I don't remember who said this I, Beth I want to say it was you actually um, I was talking in one of my videos about or, or in uh, I, I don't know it was a video I did some oh it was the video I did in the CGOA Cal's group um, Anyway, they, uh, in that video, they were asking about this wall behind me, and I was like, oh, you know, I finally got it all filled up, and somebody said, and I think it was you, Beth, but somebody said, no, uh you have an empty spot <laughs> right there, so I wanted to show you I filled the empty spot. Um, what that is, that little sweater, is actually, you guys know in the Stitches and Scraps yarn shop, I sell King Cole yarns, right? Well, when I had ordered those yarns, they actually sent me a couple of samples to display as if I was like a brick and mortar store. And I, I, I not, so I didn't display them anywhere. Um, and I keep kept meaning to show them to you, but I never got around to it. Um, and that's one of the samples. It's the cutest little baby sweater, and it's made in the King Cole Comfort Aran yarn, which you'll you see right above it. Let me grab that, I'll show it to you close up. Sorry, I'm doing a lot of getting up today. Put the snowman back. Woo. So this is the little baby sweater. Um, and it's a super cute cable sweater. It is knit. Um, and it's knit in the Comfort Erin yarn. Whoops, sorry about that. Let me make sure that that's what it says on the tag. Yep, Comfort Erin. So it's knit in this yarn right here, which I do have in the store. This is Comfort Erin. Um, my hand doesn't twist that way. There we go. Comfort Erin yarn. Um, so check that out. I've got other colors as well. And you can get this pattern on the King Cole website. They have a bunch of free patterns for all of their yarns. Um, and I realize now that I turned away from the microphone saying that, so let me say that again. Uh, they have a bunch of free patterns for all of their yarns on the King Cole website. So that's one of the patterns you can get from them. Um, and I have the yarn in the store, so check that out. Uh, and I think that's all I had to show you. Um, unless there's any questions, I am going to jump right in to the puff stitch tutorial or demo. It's not a full tutorial, right? It's just a little demo. So, here I have a puff stitch, and that steampunk 
cyanides. Oh, do you guys want to know where the name came from for this? I should tell you where the name came from for this before we get into puff stitches. So the name for this, this was actually going to be called the Nimble Right Square um, or the Nimble Right Puzzle Square because I play D&D every Thursday evening and um, we just finished a, a part of the campaign where we were in the basically the land of Nimble Rights and Nimble Rights are think like steampunk AI okay they're they're like robot AI you know artificial intelligence beings that are made all of like gears and bearings and stuff like that and um, so imagine a big you know clockwork uh, robot with intelligence um, they're, and they're, they're like there's sort of a type of magic, but anyway, I won't get too geeky on you. A anyway, we just finished a, a campaign in, in steampunk land, uh, <laughs> Nimble Right land, uh, where we had to solve this puzzle that was full of like clockwork gears and magical traps and, and all this stuff to get through and, and get the thing that we were looking for. So I almost named this Nimble Right Puzzle Square, but then I figured that was just too geeky and only like five people would get it. And so I decided um, I'll just do something with steampunk. So I'm thinking, you know, what to do with steampunk? And something about, I think it was actually the puff stitches, but something about the square reminded me of one of my first jobs. My degree, um, when I actually graduated college, was in chemistry. And I did do a couple of jobs chemistry related and then life just you know life life takes you in weird directions so i did a chemistry job and then ended up ended up teaching daycare before i got to the i taught daycare i was a realtor and now i'm doing this but when i was in a chemistry job my job was this was a, a factory that made machine dyes so if you guys are familiar with Sizzix machines um you you know like the the die cutting machines Think large manufacturing scale, like like cutting out the front of a car, okay? So this was a company that made the, the dies for that. And um, the part that I was involved in, and I don't know what this had to do with the actual dies and how it actually ended up becoming a die or getting dealt with, you know, working with a die, but there were giant rolls, and I mean giant, like person size diameter rolls, of sheet metal that would start over here on one roller and then roll down into a vat of chemicals under another roller that was down at the bottom <clears throat> and then up over another roller where it kind of dried off and then it came back down into a vat and up and there were three vats like that and each of the vats had several different chemicals, one of which was cyanide in varying quantities. I think it had something to do with etching or coating the, the, um, the steel, but, or the metal, whatever metal it was. My entire job was three times a day I had to go with this long stick and there was like this railing and I take this long grabber stick that had a, a hook on the end that held a sample cup and I would dip it into the cyanide bath and shake it off and bring it back and put it on a tray and you had to be very careful and gloves and you know all this protective gear and and then I would take it back into the lab and I would test each of these samples for all the chemicals and then go back and tell the guys on the line hey you're a little low on this or you're a little high on that and they would adjust the chemicals in the bath and I'd test it again. So three times a day I tested the three baths and then any adjustments that were needed. Um, and I, there were a lot of tests so it took a little while for each one. But anyway, um, the square, so these little baubles reminded me kind of, and, and the way they're made with the spike stitches that go between them, reminded me kind of that dipping down around the rollers thing because you just saw the end of the roller and it looked kind of like the, the puff stitch. And then it kind of just grew from there. There's like a retaining wall on the outside. So this ended up being called steampunk cyanide as a combination of D&D &D and an old chemistry job. Really obscure, I know, but but that's my story. <laughs> my mind goes in weird places sometimes. Okay, back to puff stitches. Sorry, I was rambling a little bit there. Um, okay, so this is in essence a puff stitch. Last time we talked about baubles 
And I told you that I wasn't going to show you a half double crochet bobble because a half double crochet bobble is a puff stitch. So let me show you how it works. Just like you would start a half double crochet, you yarn over, you insert your hook and you pull up a loop, right? Then you stop and you do another one. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop. And you do that usually three to five times. You can do seven, nine, 13, 12, you know, however many times you wanna do. You're adding two loops every time you do it. Let's just do five here. Okay, and I want to show you that I am bringing all the loops up to the same level. Okay, then I yarn over and pull through all those loops at once and do a little slip stitch to close. Now you, or chain, you absolutely have to do that chain. Um, unlike other stitches, there isn't a real good place to work into this. If you were working back and you worked into there, which you can do, but it kind of tilts your puff stitch sideways and it pulls on it and I don't really like doing that. I'm going to leave this one without the chain so you can see the difference. So I'm gonna finish this row without doing the chain at the end, okay? To my mind, I feel like you have to do that chain unless you're purposely trying for a crooked look. Um, but I wanna show you the difference. So when I come back to it, I had three stitches before it, okay? There is my puff and there's that, that first loop on the puff, so I'm gonna work into that, okay? And then I'm going to this puff, I made a chain on top. So this is the chain and this is the first loop in the puff. So I'm not gonna work into both. I'm just gonna work into the chain and then this is actually like the side of the puff. So I skip that and I work into the next two stitches. Okay? And I wanna show you the difference. Look at how this one is straight up and down. Okay? And then look at how this one is slanted. And that's the real difference between whether you make a chain on top or not. So to my mind, unless you're trying to get this angular look, this is puffier, this is straighter. I like this a lot better. But you know, everybody's got different tastes, just be consistent. Um, and that's, that's basically what a puff is. And that's really the only difference in the puff stitch itself is whether you make that extra chain or not. But there are different ways you can tweak it. And it has to do with the ratio of the stitches around it versus the height of the loops that you pull up. So I'm doing single crochet, right? This was a single crochet row. Let me get another single crochet row in there just to get some space. No, I won't. I'll do it here. I'll do it here. Okay. So if I do single crochet next to it, then when I bring up the loops here and I'm doing a double crochet, it's a little taller, so it puffs up a little bit. If I wanted a really tall puff stitch, raise this loop to the height that you want the puff stitch to be, okay? So up here, and then bring all of your loops up to that height. So I'm pulling these up really tall. It's probably double crochet height compared to the stitches around it. And I think I need one more. There we go. So that's five. They're all really tall height and I yarn over and pull through and then do a chain to close. And then when I do the single crochet next to it, this is a much puffier puff. Do you see how much puffier that puff is compared to that? So you can make your puffs puff more by pulling the loops up taller. You can also make them flatter or, to, or puffier by changing the height of the stitches around them. So let me finish this row and I will show you, because it's a ratio, right? This is twice as high as the stitches around it, which is why it puffs out so much more. Um, let me do one more row here so that everything's on the same side. And I did my chain, so when I get back to the puff, I am going to work into the chain, but not into that floppy loop that I pulled up tall, which was is actually acting as the side of the puff. Okay, so you can see the difference in those two puffs. This one's definitely puffier, right? Now, what if I did double crochets? Okay, so now I'm doing a double crochet row, and I'm going to do a puff in this stitch. 
Well, now the half double crochet is, is technically smaller than a double crochet, right? But because I'm already at that height, I'm going to pull it up to double crochet height. There we go. I think that's enough. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yes. Okay. And then pull through all of them. And close that, and then do double crochets next to it. And you can see that that is again a smaller one. Now if I did double crochets and I didn't pull it up to the double crochet height, but I kept it low at the half double crochet height, I think that's five, then I end up with a much smaller puff comparatively. Okay, so you can see that the difference between the height that you pull up your loops and the height of the stitches around it is what determines how puffy your puff is. Hi Sherry, good to see you. Um, so you could even do like a slip stitch row with really tall puffs next to it and you'd have really, really puffed out puffy puffs. Um, the key is you wanna be consistent in the puffiness of your puffs. <laughs> you don't want, if you've got a project with lots of puffs, you don't want one that looks like that next to one that looks like that, unless of course that's what you're going for. Um, the other thing you can change uh, about the puffs is, let me finish this row and we'll get back to the front again. And remember, I worked into the slip stitch, so don't work into that spot on the side. I keep saying slip stitch, I mean chain. Whenever I'm saying slip stitch, I mean chain. <laughs> okay, so the other thing you can change is the number of um, stitches, partial stitches that you do in your puff. So these have all been five stitch puffs. But if I did, let's do a three stitch puff and then a nine stitch puff so you can see the difference, okay? So this is a three stitch puff, that's one, two, three, okay, chain one, and then over here, let's do a nine stitch puff, and that's going to be tough to fit on this uh, handle actually, because it's going to be a lot of loops, remember you're adding two loops for each partial stitch, so nine is going to be 18, 19 loops total, so here we go, let's see if I can do it, two, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so there's 19 loops on my hook there, and I'm going to pull through all of them. And I want to show you something interesting. Now, you would think that that would make a puffier puff, but it actually makes a wider puff. See how it spreads out more? Because you've got more stitches put into one space. So compare that one to that one, and you can see how much wider that looks. So if you want a nice round puff, I usually find five stitches to be about right, but you can play with it. This is a much narrower puff, kind of taller, right? So adding more or fewer stitches does not change the puffiness of the puff. The puffiness stays the same. It changes the width of the puff. And altering the height of your stitches compared to the stitches around it is what gives you a puffier or floppier puff um, versus a flatter and less floppy puff. And I think I must have said puff about 200 times, so that would make a great drinking game if anybody's interested. Um, but that is puff stitches. And I think that's all I had for the demo. Does anybody have any questions? Um, and also, if there's anything you'd like to see next week, let me know, because I'm done with this series now. So um, I will be pulling out something else new for next week. And I think that's all I have for you. Um, you guys know how to reach me. You can find me. You can message me here. You can find me on pretty much all the social as Stitches and Scraps. Um, except Twitter, but I never go to Twitter, so don't find me on Twitter. <laughs> And uh, that's it. So have a great weekend, and I will see you guys next week. Um, and let me know what you'd like to see. Bye.